Hello, my name is Amanda Lind. I work for Blue Marble Geographics. Today I'm going to talk about LiDAR classification and grid creation in Global Mapper Pro. To classify the point cloud, I'm going to open the automatic classification tool. This tool is new in version 25 in that it includes all of the point cloud analysis tools, including classification and segmentation, and all of their settings therein. They're all nicely packaged in one little window. So let's look at what this includes. Just a quick tour. The first is input configuration, and this is where you get to specify which layers you'd work on and which how you'd like to filter them based on bounds or um, any type of LiDAR attributes. And the next section is one you may not have to mess with very much, the classification and extraction shared setting. These are the settings that we found as we look through our tools repeated through multiple tools, through classification, through vector extraction. So we put them all here so you can set it once and forget about it including resolution. Now these settings apply to all of the relevant tools in, in um, this window. And underneath that is what we're going for. This is our LiDAR classification tools. And here you'll see there are multiple options for classification. You can automatically look for ground points, building points, and so on. In order to classify these points in your point cloud, you want to check a box to enable it, and then some settings will appear. And you can choose these settings to tailor them to tell Global Mapper kind of what structures and what patterns to uh, expect in your point cloud. You can check as many boxes at once as you want to run. I usually recommend starting with ground and noise points first, because these are the basis for all the other classifications after that. So you want to make sure that these are nice and solidly done. I'm going to check these two boxes and hit classify feature. And Global Mapper is going to go through and classify all the ground and noise points. It is finished processing. So to see the classified points, I'm going to change the color LiDAR option to color by classification. So we can see that the ground points are brown, and then the few noise points that are classified are in red. Success, we can move on to the next one. Because we want to create a digital terrain model, so we just want to look at the ground points and then a surface model, which also includes the buildings and vegetation. I'm going to go ahead and classify the buildings and vegetation as well. Same process. We'll check the option for building, we'll check the option for vegetation. If you have any questions about these settings, they can be found in the help menu or in the knowledge bank. And that is classified. All of our building points is orange and our vegetation is green. Now we're ready to look at grid classification methods. There are multiple methods that can be done, but they're all run through the same tool. That is this create elevation grid kind of stripy rainbow mountain tool up here at the top. You can choose which layers you would like to work with. You'll notice here that along with the LiDAR layer, I also have loaded an elevation or an, a um, shapefile layer here that kind of outlines the river that runs through the middle of the town. We can use this shapefile because it has an elevation uh, data, an elevation attribute associated with it to help burn over and ride over some of the LiDAR points in the middle. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're finished processing. So within the grid creation options, we can choose which grid method we would like. First, I want to create a surface, a grid that is just ground points only. I'm going to choose the bidding minimum, method, minimum value method, and this is going to choose the lowest point in each area, ensuring that we just get the bare ground points and are less likely to have any noise from ground or from grass involved in that. And to further, further tailor this, I'm going to filter the LiDAR points based on classification. So I'm going to clear all of, the, all of the options and check just ground. So it'll create the grid from only the lowest ground point. Now to use the river area feature, I'm going to check the box to use the 3D line features as break lines. So it's going to take the elevation from that river area feature and overwrite and kind of burn over the LiDAR points in it. This will help make sure this hole is filled very well, especially since we know those points in the middle aren't necessarily meaningful. Another way to fill a hole using this tool is this grid node data distance criteria slider. This is how you tell Global Mapper exactly how much you want to interpolate. If you want the grid to be very accurate to the LiDAR data, you want it to be very tight up against the original points, you can slide the slider all the way over there. But if you want it to fill everything out and be very open, you can hit loose. If I were to run this without the shape file, I would slide it towards loose so we would fill over the whole um, river and create a solid surface. But I'm using the 3D area break line, so it doesn't matter. I'll click OK to create our DTM. You want to change the shader to Atlas shader if it isn't already there by default. And we can see in this new grid that the buildings have been interpolated through. So we can't see where the buildings were, but we can see the ground underneath it as it interpolates from side to side. And we can also see that the river here is one solid, um, smooth elevation surface. Now, if we wanted to create a grid that also includes the buildings, we can do that by creating a digital surface model. 
a very similar workflow, but we'll choose the grid method instead of DTM, we will choose the DSM, so it's maximum value, just to ensure that we get the tallest point on the building. And then we'll fil filter the LiDAR points again, but this time we'll include not only the ground points, but the building points. I'll click OK. We're going to use the 3D area break line again to make sure our river is flat. And then we can see our digital surface model has little buildings in it. Now that we've created this in Global Mapper, and it's provided us with this grid layer, we can use this for 3D analysis and contour generation or volume calculations, just about anything you're looking for in your grid creation. If you're interested in learning more about LiDAR classification and Global Mapper, head to our website at bluemarblegeo.com. If you have any questions, email our technical support staff at geohelp.com.